Well, hello, uh, I am Brian and I'm going to show you how to use Python in the clouds. Uh, the main goal of this tutorial is to first uh, get some practical uh, skills to upload uh, files, make some processing and uh, download them. This video uh, is going to be part of a series of videos for people that don't know uh, anything about Python. Uh, may maybe something, but uh, the idea is that you could use just Python and take advantage of cloud resources to plot data. Maybe you are a scientist, maybe if you are from a field that is not related to programming, these series of videos are for you. So in that sense, um, I'm Brian Saldivar, you can reach me out here in these links over here. And our objectives in this video are as follows. First, access Google Collaboratory, upload files, make some processing, download the process files and save the process files to Google Drive. So let's get started with this. Uh, here I am in my Google Drive and what I'm going to start is to create a new document. In this case, uh, you search for collaboratory. It's a kind of file, it's a notebook. It's also called a Jupyter notebook and is used for making some programming Python. Uh, you could also find uh, notebooks or pro, uh, programming with R, but we are focusing with Python and this is made for Python. So I'm going to change the name first of this file. Um, part one, uh, files. That's the name, hit enter. And I return here and uh, you can see that the, the name has changed. Uh, so First, uh, we have to search for the code to upload files. <coughs> uh, you can actually search for that on just on Google, but I make it here in the last part of my uh, is for mounting. Okay, I didn't copy, it, so I, we are going to search for that on Google. This is the overall structure of the, of, of the program. Uh, we are going to do this and in the next video I'm going to show this part make plots with the date so we're going to search for uh, Google Collaborative uh, yes get the first link yes this is what I do I don't remember anything uh, related to coding I just Google it that's the way you should do it too so this is for upload files. We copy and paste it just like that. So we hit uh, ah, to make this cell run. Uh, we can make click on this play button, or we uh, press on the keyboard Shift and Enter. Then we execute the cell. Uh, this uh, cell each cell works like independently. So if you only hit run on this cell, this only cell is going to execute. That's very practical. So we have, uh, click on this, we choose files, click on choose files. I have this CSV file here and nothing happened. I'm going to do this again. Sometimes when you do this too, too slowly, you have to hit it again. Now, now there is done. If I load the file, now to see what files do you have, you you start with this sign, exclamation sign, and ls. ls is a way to uh, use the bash from Linux into the Google Cloud. This is just to list what is present in the current directory. We should enter, and we can see that we have these files and Apparently, we uploaded uh, the file three times, the first two times that we didn't see. 
So this is the file we, we want. To work with CSV data, we need a library called Pandas. Uh, and to import this library, we make this import, the name of the library. And to make a shorter version of the name, we add as PD. So it's just like using this library with the name Pandas, but, but with a shorter name. We shift enter, it's the same as executing and clicking here. And then PD dot read CSV. Here, when you have some clue about how the command works, how it's the, the name, you only type something and then click tab. So read CSV. And here we uh, write the name diabetes and in the same uh, procedure, in the same manner, uh, we have some clue. Uh, we just type something and then we click tab and all the options are available for us up here. So here, uh, shift enter now. And this is the content of this CSV file. You could also see this file with, like with Excel or other spreadsheet software. So this uh, data set I downloaded from the internet from a library called Scikit-Learn. I will put the references later, but this is the content. We have uh, and some columns. I believe that we have four, 12, 14 uh, columns of features that are our um, independent variables. And our dependent variable is the target. I'm not going to focus on the interpretation of this. We are just going to use this data. So with, uh, with this command, we like load the, the data set from the CSV. So the next part is we have to assign this content into a variable. So we could use this variable and call all these properties later. So I'm going to call this diabetes underscore df and hit shift enter. So when I'm doing this, I am loading with this command the data and I am assigning all this content and the properties of a data frame. The data frame is this pandas kind of uh, object that will be used or will give us some properties to process the data. So Later, we, we, we need some kind of information about this. Uh, we type diabetes that underscore df. And some of the most popular properties are, for example, head. We type head and then parentheses and shift enter. And it's going to show us some of the top uh, rows of this. Uh, again, I'm going to use head but with some other parameters and I'm going to for example n we specify n or just the number to the say the number of rows that we want to see for example two only the first two rows and we see the first two rows here let's say now we want to see the bottom rows so diabetes underscore the that in this case is tail Tail, and in the same way we, we can specify the number of rows that we want to see let's say five here we go we have five now another property that we can have from this is the shape the size of this data frame of this csv file so for that we are going to use the property shape so diabetes underscore the F, shape and it says that we have uh, 442 rows and 11 columns now uh, as you saw the first uh, row is assigned to the name of each column so if we want if we want to get access to this list of columns we use the property columns and shift enter. You can see some differences here. Uh, for example, for head, we use parentheses, 
but for shape and columns we don't. This is because um, these head and tail are actually functions. Uh, so these functions make some kind of processing. On the other hand, when, you, when we use shape and columns, these are like attributes of this variable, diabetes underscore pf. So uh, this, when you call an attribute, you don't use parentheses. How to you how to know what is what? Actually, you you just have to use it. And but some way to know more about something is to use the command help. For example, I put help, and I'm going to see what is available from diabetes underscore df. Shift enter. And. It's, it's taking some time, and here appears like more uh, information from this. Uh, all the properties that every everything that is possible, all the comments that are possible, are here. Obviously, you don't have to read it unless you really need to, this information. For example, you want to know all the parameters that the head uh, of function uh, has. You uh, also use help for the head function. So we type help. Notice that I didn't use the parentheses here. So this is the, the information that we have and it only has a, a parameter n. So anything else. It, it, you can only put one parameter inside of head. That is the number of rows that you want. So uh, now, how we how do we get access, or how do we make some processing to the data? So uh, let's see. To list, for example, only one column that we want, we have two options. The first and easiest option is to call the column by its name. For example, let's see again the two rows. Of this. So here we have uh, this um, number of columns and for example I want, if I want to add another cell to run codes I go to the upper part and this is in Spanish. I, I need to see how to change the language. I'm changing it to English, sorry for that. Okay, so since I changed uh, this, apparently I will need to uh, run everything again. No, I didn't. So it, apparently it's, it's okay with everything. I already ran. It's okay. just loading the previous outputs. I believe and post. No, it, it is. Yes, it is. It was just loading the, all the outputs. So now we add the option of code over over here to get another cell. So uh, again, diabetes. No, it's not this. Diabetes underscore the F and to uh, get access to the column, for example, age, we use square brackets. Square brackets. I'm using the square brackets just uh, directly, very close, no spaces between the name of the variable and the square brackets. And instead of it, I'm going to write the name of the column. In this case, will be age. So here I, I have access only to this column. These are the values of this. So for example, if I want to see this and uh, only want to see the first rows of this particular column, I'm going to add again some other functions that belong to this object diabetes.pf. So I'm going to add a point, a dot, and head. And again, like the first four rows. 
and these are the values of the first four rows of the column age. Now, let's say that I want to see two columns. For two columns, it's a bit different. You need to specify a list of columns. A list is a type of Python variable that collects different kind of variables, or not variables, objects. Uh, so for example, uh, first I'm going to define a list, just to make it more clear. Uh, I'm going to call it C calls. And to specify a list, you use square brackets. So inside of, of square brackets, we are going to use the name of the column that we want to see. For example, age and sex. These are our uh, particular interest uh, columns. So now we repeat the previous process, but instead of just writing the name of one column, we are going to use this variable of a list inside the data frame. The data frame is the name of the variable of the pandas uh, object that for us is diabetes underscore df. It's the same thing. So inside diabetes underscore df, we write the name of the variable instead of the content, instead of using uh, the previous example. So I'm going to execute and we have access to these previous uh, columns. So again, if I want to see the first five rows, I add that, head, uh, and five. Again, to make it more clear, I'm going to use like a more raw approach that is going to use a list inside the square brackets with the same uh, columns or variable names. So this is the same. So you can see that instead of having to have double square brackets, I, uh, the other way is you assign this list of uh, values uh, to a variable and only use the, the, the variable that you created uh, as, as the input. So again, if I want to see the first two rows, I change that head and two, and I see the content of this file. Okay, so far so good. The next step, we are going to make a simple thing. Uh, we are going to add, uh, first, you can see here from the columns present that, for example, age is not like an, uh, an integer, is like a 0 0.03. This is because the data was pre-processed and it was normalized. So, uh, we are not going to see how to make it yet, but we are going to make some simple for example, to manipulation of the data to, to later uh, download this information. So let's say um, we want to, instead of these previous two columns, we're going to use the columns S1 and S2, whatever it will be. So diabetes underscore the F. So our columns are going to be, are going to name a new variable calls which names S1 and S2 and I'm going to use it here calls and I'm going to see only the first three rows okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just the number one to every value of the column S1 so to do so and uh, diabetes underscore df. I'm going to uh, see the content as of S1. Here it is. So now I am going to add, for example, the, uh, the number two. And because uh, this column has a float uh, type of variable, a float is like a decimal number. Uh, I can add numbers just like that. So I added 
just the number 2 to all the values in S1. Now, I, uh, I even if I added this number, I didn't change anything in the diabetes underscore the variable. So this is just uh, what you're seeing the result, but it wasn't saved. So just to uh, show this, uh, this was the S1 variable. Going to get two. And you can see that it's still the same very uh, same values originally. So in order to do a change, we are going to create a new variable, and this new variable uh, that is going to be part of a new data frame, or uh, is going to collect the the processing. So to do so, uh, I strongly recommend that you make a copy of the original data always so if you don't do that you maybe manipulate your data sets and pro probably get into uh, future mistakes so to make a copy I'm going to just call this uh, dia copy of diabetes underscore yet it's going to be diabetes Understood it that copy. When we do this, we are making an exact exact copy of all the content into a new variable. And by doing so, if we manipulate something in the new variable, we are not going to affect the first one. That's very important. So the name is quite long, I shouldn't have done that. So uh, the next thing is again I'm going to call the the values of this uh, new variable and it has the same values of the previous one but now we are going to manipulate it so we're going to add two and as I told you this changed nothing so to make this change we are going to assign a new column inside of this data frame. Data frame is again this type of variable that is a pandas data frame, a pandas kind of variable. And we're going to call S1 plus 2. This is the syntax. So we define the name of the data frame, that is our variable that contains the, the CSV content. Uh, it's not making changes directly into the CSV file. And then the square brackets and the name of the new variable. This is going to receive the processing of the right part of this line. That is uh, the content of S1 plus the number 2. So we are, I'm going to run this with shift enter. And uh, let's see if there is some changes. Uh, first, I'm going to show head here, the first three rows. And you can see that we have our previous columns. And now at the end, we have the S1 plus 2 column. That is the content of S1 plus the number 2. That's what we did. So now just let's say that that's everything that we wanted now we are going to uh, download the data what the, the result of what we did so in order to do so first go to the left part and you are going to see this arrow over here you are going to click on files and you can see that here is the file that we uploaded previously and another option to use the, the first line of our code of uh, using code to upload file is just getting in here files uh, right click no not right click just here click on up, upload and you could upload the files that's another option so uh, in order to save into a file the content of this data frame is going to be the follow as follows the name of these uh, pandas that data frame type of variable, then dot, then two CSV. 
Okay, now uh, some of the arguments that we need here are two, mainly two. One is the name of the file, and this is going to be, for example, diabetes, change it, that CSV. This is going to be the name of the new file. Uh, and we're going to say index false. This option here that, that we are adding first, uh, we, are all, we always add uh, parameters by adding a comma between parameters. So here with index false, we are saying that when we are going to save the content into a new file, we are not going to save the index. The index is this column without a name that is in the left part that starts by 0, 1, 2, and so on. When you don't specify this, you are going to save it as a new column and the next time that you are going to see this file, you are going to see a new column of this index. And we don't want it. We want to preserve the content as we upload it. That's the reason we are not doing anything about it. So, shift enter. And we did it and it must appear here. So, we click refresh. And it's here. Diabetes changed that CSV. To download it, right click, download. And now it's on your computer. The other option that you might want to do is uh, sometimes files could be difficult to download because of the size. So you might want to save it to your Google Drive uh, folder. So what we're going to do now is going to use the, uh, the content to sell to save in Google Drive. It's going to look more complicated, but actually it's pretty easy. Um, first, we are going to use this code again from the, I'm going to use the content for here and use the link, put the link in the, at the end of the video. And this is the code that we need. We're going to add a text file, a text cell, and this is going to be kind of title, uh, mount, Google, Drive, shift enter, and you shift enter again the cell, and we are going to see this. You click on this link, it's going to take you to a kind of validation website where you use the content the your user that you are going to use for mounting you can use another uh, Google Drive account so then you copy this code by clicking on this then you return and paste this here Now, it's mounted. How do we know it's mounted? We click here and refresh, and you can see Google Drive is here. So, if you make, uh, keep making click here, you can see the structure of all your the content of your Google Drive. So, in my case, uh, we are going to save it in, a, in some way in the same directory where we are. To do so, what we are going to do, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to use a, another library called OS, import OS, that it means from operative system. OS that list dir. And here uh, we start by G drive. That's it. That is the name of the folder that contains uh, a Google Drive. Next, I'm going to here we have the my drive then slash and we're going to see my folders so these these are my folders and i i want to save it in my jobs directory always at least for some folders here and i'm going to use ai ml then um, Python course. Python course. 
remember to finish with slash ship ender to list again what is person here. Yes. And this is the part where we are. You can see that here there are these files are not present. This is because uh, Google Drive has another folder to store all your data. When you close this, everything, every file that you have uploaded or processed is going to disappear. So that's the reason that you need to save all the content that you processed after you are done. So this is a uh, path that we need. So now I'm going to assign um, save here as the save directory is going to be the content of this. Okay, so now uh, I want to repeat this command, but uh, the name of the file has to be precedes, but uh, by the name of the folder. Uh, as a simple way to see it is, if I do this, I'm using that like the full uh, directory uh, path and at the end the name of the file. So I'm going to save this, save it like that. And I'm going to use this command again to see if I have saved the file in this directory. Uh -huh. And you can see that we have uploads the changes in this directory. So. Uh, the other way to make this shorter is to uh, one option is save here plus the name of the file this diabetes changed at CSV. This is going to be the saved file. This plus sign means that we are going to mix the this string this string is this kind of variable that is only characters uh, words uh, and are not numbers so uh, with this plus we make this just to show you what i did so this is like the contents all these string is uh, can be made with these other two lines so again what i want to do is just in case i'm going to use the same but instead of using all these string i'm going to use this the name of the variable that contains this string the string again is the type of variable that are characters words and shift enter and we did it so that's everything for this session very long session sorry for that but with this you have done many things one uh, you have seen how to upload files you have seen how to make some changes you have seen how to download files that's what you have seen in this video Thanks. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, try to please write it in the comments of the video or to write me on Twitter, mostly on Twitter, please.